Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. Let us sign ourselves and begin the chaplet in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Together. You expire, yes, Jesus, but the source of life gushed forth for souls, and the ocean of mercy opened up for the whole world. O fountain of life, unfathomable divine mercy, envelop the whole world and empty yourself out upon us. O blood and water which gush forth from the heart of Jesus, as a fount of mercy for us, I trust in you. O blood and water which gush forth from the heart of Jesus, as a fount of mercy for us, I trust in you. O blood and water which gush forth from the heart of Jesus, as a fount of mercy for us, I trust in you. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Eternal Father, I
the same on sorrowful passion. Sorrowful passion. 
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and with your spirit. spirit. My dear sisters and brothers, we celebrate the 21st Sunday of the year. And we also celebrate the memorial of the Queenship of Mary as Queen of Heaven and Earth today. And as we place ourselves before the table of the Lord, let us with a humble and contrite heart examine ourselves for the times we may have failed to walk in the path God had called us to. I confess to Almighty God, God and, and to you, you, my brothers, brothers and sisters, sisters that, that I have greatly sinned, sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and, and on earth, earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You, you are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose. Grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise. That amidst the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may always be fixed on that place where true gladness is to be found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Joshua. 
Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel together at Shechem. Then he called the elders, leaders, judges, and scribes of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. Then Joshua said to all the people, If you will not serve the Lord, choose today whom you wish to serve, whether the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are now living. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. The people answered, We have no intention of deserting the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors out of the land of Egypt, the house of slavery, who worked those great wonders before our eyes and preserved us all along the way we traveled and among all the peoples through whom we journeyed. We too will serve the Lord, for he is our God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Taste and see that the Lord is good. I will bless the Lord at all times. He prays always on my lips. In the Lord my soul shall make its boast. The humble shall hear and be glad. Taste and see that the Lord is good. The Lord turns his face against the wicked to destroy their remembrance from the earth. The Lord turns his eyes to the just and his ears to their appeal. Taste and see that the Lord is good. They call and the Lord hears and rescues them in all their distress. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. Those whose spirit is crushed, he will save. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Many are the trials of the just man, but from them all the Lord will rescue him. He will keep guard over all his bones. Not one of his bones shall be broken. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Evil brings death to the wicked. Those who hate the good are doomed. The Lord ransoms the souls of his servants. Those who hide in him shall not be condemned. Taste and see that the Lord is good. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Give way to one another in obedience to Christ. Wives should regard their husbands as they regard the Lord, since as Christ is head of the church and saves the whole body, so is a husband the head of his wife. And as the church submits to Christ, so should wives to their husbands in everything. Husbands should love their wives just as Christ loved the church and sacrificed himself for her to make her holy. He made her clean by washing her in water with the form of words so that when he took her to himself, she would be glorious with no speck or wrinkle or anything like that but holy and faultless. In the same way, husbands must love their wives as they love their own bodies. For a man to love his wife is for him to love himself. A man never hates his own body, but he feeds it and looks after it. And that is the way Christ treats the church, because it is his body. 
and we are its living parts. For this reason, a man must leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two will become one body. This mystery has many implications, but I am saying it applies to Christ and the Church. The Word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Spirit, Lord, and they are life. You have the message of eternal life. From the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, o Lord. After hearing his doctrine, many of the followers of Jesus said, This is intolerable language. How could anyone accept it? Jesus was aware that his followers were complaining about it and said, Does this upset you? What if you should see the Son of Man ascend to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh has nothing to offer. The words I've spoken to you are spirit, and they are life. But there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the outset those who did not believe and who it was that would be betray him. He went on, this is why I told you that no one could come to me unless the Father allows them. After this, many of the disciples left him and stopped going with him. Then Jesus said to the twelve, what about you? Do you want to go away? Simon Peter answered, Lord, who shall we go to? You have the message of eternal life. And we believe, we know that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Very good morning, everyone. Good morning, Father. It's a quiet, it's a cool, serene morning. Allow me to, allow me to begin my reflection with you with a, a little tale, a little story I picked up during my seminary days. It was about a young man who was to take office as the new chairperson, as the new CEO of an established prominent firm. And as he stepped into the office, he, he came face to face with the outgoing chairperson, the, an elderly old man, an elderly old man, and he, he looked at the old elderly uh, old man, he says, Sir, you have been a legend in this firm. You have been one of the prominent leaders in this whole establishment. As I take office 
of this company. Is there any words of wisdom that you would like to share with me? If there's any words that you would like to leave behind for me? And so this old man looked at this young chap and he says, only three words, just three simple words. Make good decisions. Make good decisions. Life is filled with decisions. Each day, from dawn to dusk, our lives is shaped by many decisions. Where to eat, what to eat, where to go, what to buy, investments, buying a house, career jobs, marriages, vocations. It's always about the process of making a decision. But before we step into a decision, there is always an array, a spectrum of choices that lies before us. It's a whole series of choices that we face every day. Even at this very moment that I'm standing before you, you had the choice whether to step into the mass or to find yourself flying to Australia or Singapore. You had the choice. And yet we made the decision to, to step into this morning's mass. Because the beauty about this choice and decision is the word freedom. We have that freedom within us. God entailed or given us that freedom. You find this in the very book of Genesis. Adam and Eve in the garden and everything was given to their contentment. They were blessed wonderfully. But God told them not to, not to eat of the fruit. The freedom was given to them. And yet as we know from the story, temptation lured them into having to eat the fruit by the evil one. And they fell. That was the decision they made. And yet we know as the story tells us, God came into the garden in the evening of the day in search for them. You find this in the whole book of the Bible. Choices after choices. Life is always about the choice, but the turning point is always the decision. The decision makes us what we are today. The decision to choose or not to choose, to step forward or to step backwards. That's the whole series that we find ourselves today, to make decisions in life. Allow me to take you now into the readings this morning because the readings tells us today about where we stand with regards to our relationship with God and with one another in the journey of our faith. I take you to the first book of Joshua. It's a very beautiful story. It's the last chapter of the book of Joshua. It's the last chapter. It's chapter 24 of the book of Joshua. And it's Joshua's parting words. Jo Joshua's testament to the Israelites before his death, before his parting and this whole series of words that Joshua is having with the Israelites is at a very special, prominent place. It's called Shechem. Shechem is considered the shrine. It's the sanctuary of the Israelites of the Old Testament. If you remember the story of Abraham, that's the first place Abraham met God at Shechem. That's the first place Abraham built the altar for God at Shechem. It's the holy shrine. It's the holy place. And Joshua is now the new PM. I mean the new leader. He didn't have any SDs to have for his position. It was at the death of Moses that he took over the office as the leader. And so what he did at Shechem was to gather all the tribes, all the leaders, all the judges, and everyone gathered them at Shechem. And it was a moment to renew that covenant with God a moment to make that decision of their steadfast experience in God. And Joshua said one of the most important words in the journey of the Israelites. Choose today whom do you want to serve. Choose today whom you will serve. Make that decision today. That's what Joshua tells the Israelites today. Choose today whom you will serve. For me and for my household, 
we have decided we will serve the God of our fathers, simply meaning the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. We will serve that God, the God who led us out, and not the God of the Amorites, the God of the Canaanites, the foreign gods. We will not do that. But you choose, you make that decision today. Joshua is throwing that across to the people today. But Joshua doesn't stop there. He takes them back to the experiences of their life. He goes back to the story of Abraham. He goes back to the story of Moses. He takes them back to the wilderness, to the journey, to the slavery, to the bondage, to the Egypt experience, to the freedom that they experienced. And God was with them. And God had brought them to this promised land. And God is with them. Joshua knows that he is about to die. But he wants his people to make that decision. Choose today whom you will serve. A question you and I may stand to answer at some point of our lives. The gospel echoes everything about the book of Joshua. It's a whole continuation of the story of the five loaves and the two fish. We remember the story when Jesus had finished preaching and the crowds grew hungry and Jesus needed to feed them and he asked the disciples and they were not able. And then the, the boy with two lo five loaves and two fish came forward and Jesus did the miracle and fed them. And then he realized these people were looking at me as the, as the food bank, as the supplier. And they wanted to make him a king and Jesus got into the boat and went to the other side of the lake. But they followed him. Jesus turned back and says, you're not looking for me because of who I am. You're looking for me because I fed you, because your needs are being accomplished, because your gratifications are being fulfilled. That's what you're looking for me. And then he said one of the most hard, strong words to the disciples, to the followers and the crowds, eat my flesh, drink my blood, my flesh, my blood which was the Eucharist. And today we come to that turning point. They couldn't take this teaching. He says, what is this man telling us? Eat his flesh, drink his blood. And slowly they moved away. They met, met that decision to say, this man is not right. This teaching is not good. And they slowly moved away. And Jesus looked at the disciples and said there was a confusion there was a crisis going on in the disciples there was a crossroads that they were facing do I continue with this man Jesus or do I step back and so Jesus asked the disciples what about you are you going away do you want to go away do you want to leave me and as we know Simon Peter, the head of the community, the head of the church, turns to Jesus and says, Lord, to whom shall we go, Lord? You have the words of eternal life. You are the one. You are the truth. You are the way. You are the life. As we look at the story of the disciples, as we look at the Israelites, as we look at the whole story of today, my question to you simply is this, what's your decision? What is your decision in the moments of your life? When you come to that T-junction, when you come to the crossroads of your life, when you have to make a decision, how do you discern the spirit at that moment? When you have to make a very crucial and critical decision in your life, what, what is it that animates you? What is it that governs your decision process at that moment? Because in the journey of my life as a priest, I've encountered wonderful numerous occasions of people who have come to the process of decisions. There is always a moment of guilt that covers you. Guilt. Father, I have to do this, Father. It's not out of love, but it's out of guilt. There's also a moment when you find there's fear Father, do you think if I take the wrong decision, God will punish me? There is always a moment of fear in us and guilt of what God will do. 
Will God punish me, Father, for this moment if I turn away from accepting this decision of God? Guilt, fear. Is there a moment of gratitude and love that shapes that decision? The choices are there. Jesus asked the disciples today, what about you guys? Do you want to go away? My dear friends, we, we face these moments almost every other day in life. As I said to you, it's from dawn to dusk, from sunrise to sunset. We are just shaped by decisions. You know, do I get up? Do I stay in bed? Do I follow the teachings of the church? Do I lie? Do I tell the truth? Do I follow what is asked of me? Or do I? There is always that fear, greed, guilt. One of the dangerous moments of decision is duty bound. Father, I come for Mass because it's a duty to come for Mass on Sundays. I'm here because my mother asked me to sit down for Mass. It's a duty, Father. We do it out out of fear, guilt, duty. I don't know. It's good for us to take a moment and ask in the decision process of our following of Christ. What is it that shapes, colors and molds our decisions? Because, as I said from the very beginning, decisions make us to be what we are in life. What is important today was two words that Jesus was asking from the disciples. Likewise, Joshua was asking it from the Israelites. A commitment and a conviction of life. A commitment and a conviction to follow him. To say, Lord, I am with you. I love the story of Ruth this past few days. I, I kind of fell in love with her words. Wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you live, I will live. Your people shall be my people. Your God shall be my God. A whole expression of conviction and commitment. That is all the Lord asks of us when we place ourselves in the renewal of our journey. The narrow gate that the Lord asks us to step in. It's always there, that conviction and commitment in our whole spiritual life. I have followed you, Lord. I have left everything. Sometimes it's difficult, just like the rich young man who found it hard to let go of the things in his life. Because there were other things that shaped his life. Conviction and commitment. That's the decision that we take in life. I kind of just want to end my sharing with you this morning with the story I began with about this young man who stepped into the office of this elderly man who was stepping out and he asked this old man if there was some words of wisdom for, for this young man to take office as the new leader. And if you remember, he said there's just three words. Make good decisions. It didn't end there. This young man, as he was leaving the office, turned back and looked at the old man. What is the key? What is the key to make good decisions in life? What is that key? And the old man said one word, experiences, experiences. And just as this young guy was looking at this old man, he says, what is it in their experiences that I would learn? Two words, he said, bad choices. Bad choices. We all have made wrong choices in life. And that is why experiences allows us to make changes. As the woman at the well, the woman caught in adultery, Zacchaeus, Matthew, the tax collector, it's always a moment of conversion in that decision from the past experiences of our life to make the good decisions in life. Let us ask the Lord from the experiences of our life, choose today whom do you want to serve? And then we will realize where we need to go in conviction and commitment to the Lord. We stand in our faith in God and the church. 
I believe in one God, God the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not mid, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, sake, he was, he was crucified, crucified under Pontius Pilate. Pilate. He, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God, our Creator, guardian of our homes and source of our blessings, you delight in the happiness of your people. Hear the prayers of the Church for all your faithful for the entire world. Fulfill our needs and guide our actions towards the building of your kingdom. Let our response be, Lord, hear our prayer. We beseech you, O Lord, to hear the prayers of Pope Francis, bishops, priests, religious and all who sow your word, that their proclamation of the gospel will deeply entrench the message of peace, joy, and hope to a world that is troubled. We humbly pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. We beseech you, O Lord, to redeem the glory of our country, that you will bestow its leaders with wisdom, grace, fairness, and hearts that are pure for the well-being of the people that they are called to serve. We humbly pray. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. We beseech you, O Lord, for an end to this pandemic that all those who are affected be delivered from its perils and those who minister to the sick, the downtrodden and despairing be granted supernatural strength and protection. We humbly pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We beseech you, O Lord, to help us safeguard our common home, this earth that you have entrusted to us, that we will heed its cry of pain and fulfill our duty of care in every way we can. We humbly pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We beseech you, O Lord, to hear our intentions as we now pray in silence.
we humbly pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Accept and make us worthy, O Lord, to hear our prayers, our petitions, and our supplications. Grant us a clear conscience to call upon you in all moments, in all time, so that you will be merciful to us in the abundance of your goodness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Together, Hail, Hail guardian, guardian of the, the Redeemer, Spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to, to you God entrusted His only Son, in you, Mary, placed her trust. With you, Christ became man. Blessed Joseph, to us too, show yourself a father and guide us in the path of life. Obtain for us grace, mercy, and courage, and defend us from every evil. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, to your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given in human hands, have made it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, to your goodness we have this wine to offer. Through the wine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. Pray, my dear sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May, may the Lord, Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O Lord, you who gained for yourself a people by adoption to the one sacrifice offered once for all, Bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and of peace in your church. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. My dear friends, as we step into the prayer phase and into Eucharistic prayer, we pause to pray for the intentions of this morning's Eucharist. I invite you to pray for our nation, for all the leaders. I invite you to pray for your personal intentions, what lies at the depths of your heart, in the stillness of the silence. I also invite you to pray in a very special way for the people of Afghanistan, the weak, the vulnerable, the downtrodden, especially for all those who are persecuted. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, 
always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer, your Son, to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to the gifts of and by our sin we have lost in our disobedience. And so, Father, with the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim. rightly gives you praise for to your son our Lord Jesus Christ by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit you give life to all things and you make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the Sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore Lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, Father, he set the blessing and broke the bread and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim the death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant it we who are nourished by the body and the blood of your Son, and filled with the Holy Spirit, we may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, 
especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her husband, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Faustina and John Paul II and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, your servant Francis, our Pope, and Sebastian, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all clergy and religious, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family and community whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all children scattered throughout the world. To our departed sisters and brothers and to all who are pleasing to you, at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come. Thy, thy will, will be done, done on, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the fate of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. My dear friends, the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. We take this moment to offer that peace to one another. Peace be with you. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not, not worthy that, that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, says the Lord, and I will raise them up on the last day. Let us pray. Complete within us, Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy, and graciously perfect and sustain us, so that in all things we may always please you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Parish announcements and updates. I'd like to invite you to take a moment to, to step into the virtual wall of mercy or to the website and to just have an idea of what's happening in the parish this past few days and in the coming weeks. I'd like just to highlight to you what's the whole experience about the wall of mercy and the serve in mercy. This past weeks I've been speaking quite a bit on the different areas that we have been reaching out in both the migrants and the local. And uh, we have done quite a bit, and uh, I just invite you to continue to pray for all those who are in the midst of reaching out to these people as we continue to do what is needed 
and the needful. And for those of you who are continuously sharing your giftedness to us, both in cash or in kind, from the depths of the heart of the parish and from the community, we thank you. Ribuan Trimakase for all that you have done for us as we continue this outreaching ministry of God's love and God's mercy, of God's providence to one another. I'm just going to turn my whole focus now to this whole thing about the one in mercy as we move closer to the eighth parish anniversary. The word here is, the heat is on, the heat is on. I love that song, the heat is on. It's now moving into the climax of what is happening closer and closer. There's so much that is happening this past few days. There's been groups that's been coming up. We have been receiving a couple of videos. And to just give you a, another insight to this mystery box that is coming forward to the Wednesday, the 29th of September, I'm going to invite a wonderful, remarkable man in this parish. You all know him by sight. He's a wonderful man. He's going to share with us this moment uh, what's this whole experience about one in mercy in the parish. I'm going to invite Zachary, our parish pastoral council. Zach, please come forward. Thank you, Father. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Last week, our sister Adeline stood here sharing with you our plans as we prepare ourselves to celebrate our 8th parish anniversary on this 29th September. Hence, the launching of the parish anniversary theme song, One in Mercy. Have you listened to the song? Did you listen to the lyrics? I was truly touched ever since the first time it was revealed to me. I was told to learn and sing the song together. The song was composed by our own parishioner, stirred by the spirit of mercy that is flowing out of each and every one of us. The song truly captures the essence of who we are, what we are, and what we are striving to be. Mercy we believe in, mercy we live out, mercy freely given, serve with mercy is our shout. Indeed, we have come together despite all the challenges that we faced the raging storm of the pandemic that we bear. And it's only through the trust we have in Jesus that we are here standing strong. We count our blessings every day. We are grateful with what we have been given and in what we are able to give back. The blessings was not for us alone, but for us to share. For example, the Surf in Mercy project, which began a few months ago, was a true evidence of how the spirit of being one in mercy have brought many of us together to reach out to many of those who are struggling in our community. Each and every small act of love truly becomes mighty ones. The works of mercy lead up our way. Because of that, we want to show God how grateful we are. We want to tell everyone the love and joy that we feel. In this time of lockdown, it is sad that we can't be physically together to celebrate. It is sad that we can't go out around mingling and hugging each other like we used to. Then the idea of what if we dance to show our love and joy to everyone came about. It was a good idea. But how do we dance together in this time of lockdown and pandemic? How can we include each and every one of our parishioners in the dance? The doors won't be open anytime soon, but we can still be together in spirit. We can still be together online. Our sister Adeline and her team then launched the video presentation of the dance to the theme song, One in Mercy. 
we are inviting all of you to participate. Make a video of yourself and with your family. Send the video to us. We will compile the video and share with all during the anniversary celebration. <laughs> if some of you are like me, shy, feeling silly dancing, or may think that these are only for the younger generation, it's okay. Don't feel that way. Let's be silly together. Let's do this for God. Let's do this for CDM. Hey, you'll never know. The Oppa Gangnam dance can be famous. Maybe if this can be viral, we can be insta-famous too. In the spirit of togetherness, one in mercy, a few of us men came together and we did this video, which we're about to show you next. Hope you enjoy making your video and we look forward to see your dance soon. Thank you. Excited. Thanks, Zach. Maybe I should find some time to dance. King David, when he came back, he danced for the Lord. Maybe it's time for us to find some time. My dear friends, some of you might be struggling. It's never too late. It's a moment for us to step into our silliness, into our little childlikeness to express our love for affection and our gratitude to God as we celebrate the parish anniversary. So kindly take note that we, there is a closing date for it. It's on the 5th of September. So please send in your videos, send in your 
story of your dance to us. And hopefully I will also find some time during this week to have my dance so that it could be inserted into the video for our parish feast. Let us continue to praise, to thank, to glorify and to magnify the Lord for all that the Lord has given us. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. And may the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. Have a blessed weekend, a blessed week and do stay safe. God bless you, Father.